My name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 109 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. For the last couple of months we've been mainly working on reframing but now uh, while a couple of the guys are going to try and keep on making frames uh, I'm going to start working towards replacing the other centerline timbers of the boat. So the first thing to do is to look at some drawings and the lofting and make a bit of a plan. So right now I'm marking out the stern post on the lofting floor. So I'm taking measurements off the construction drawing and also measurements off the actual stern post on the boat, comparing them and then drawing that piece on the lofting floor. I'll then do the same thing with the other centerline pieces uh, in the stern area, so the uh, after deadwoods and the stern knee. So um, Hunter's been here quite a while now. When you arrived, you um, you hadn't really had any experience woodworking. Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure how it would go, but you've really um, you know put a lot of energy into it, and it's been really nice to see you develop a lot more confidence in tools and mm -hmm. and really be uh, incredibly useful. So um, I really appreciate your help. Appreciate being here. I learned more than I could have ever hoped for. Fantastic. Uh, and I know I'll miss it just later this week. How have you found like the, the hard work aspect of it? Because I know at the beginning it's like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe a bit more than you're used to. Yeah, uh, I already feel like I'm used to it. It's just kind of become part of life. We'll see you again then? Absolutely. Okay, well, I look forward to it. Me too. Thanks. <laughs> So it's pretty chilly here, it's actually started snowing now. The last week has been um, just pretty hectic, uh, getting things organized, been doing a, a lot of work with the guys, um, teaching them you know, all the processes with the frames. And there have been various other things going on which have taken time and attention. We did have a pretty big team for a, a little while while a few people overlapped. Nico is a really great guy but uh, unfortunately things just didn't quite work out with him this time. So he's gone off to have a different adventure and maybe we'll work something slightly different out another time. So Finn is still here, he's extended his flight, uh, he's really good to have around, he's a really hard worker and he's enjoying his time here.
got something horrible to tell you. Horrible. Horrible? Yeah, it'll go back on. Will it? Oh no, not it really. Won't. No. Not much. <laughs> I guess it means we have to put it. Take Sorry. It off and put it. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Leo. You Things were going along actually. really well until you showed up. <laughs> See you then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, like a dream. <laughs>pretty much finished the design and the templating now of the stern assembly that is the uh, after deadwoods and the uh, stern knee and the stern post basically these big pieces um, are basically a bracket or a knee to support the stern post which is the uh, almost upright piece at the back of the boat and they really act as a strong way of attaching that to the keel i'm just about ready to go out and start offering these templates up to the stack of purple heart but before I do that, I'm just going to copy the water lines and the uh, station lines uh, onto these templates so that eventually I'll be able to put those marks onto the actual pieces of the uh, stern assembly and then when they go into the boat, I'll be able to line them up where they need to go. first thing I'm doing is um, just getting them out of the pile and then inspecting them really thoroughly for any defects with the help of my beautiful assistant of course <laughs> although uh, she'll only be out here for a few minutes in this weather well I finally found a knot in one of the pieces of timber uh, it's right here it's not too bad um, but I'm going to try and avoid it and I think luckily uh, with the slightly extra length I've got here uh, I can actually get both pieces of the after deadwood out of this piece and still just avoid this knot here. So the next step is to um, flatten one face so I've got a nice flat surface to start from and I can mark my templates on that. So somebody recently noticed uh, in one of my videos that we were working on the ship saw um, using headlamps. A guy who lives not too far away from here had um, eight really high powered LED lamps um, that he 
didn't need anymore. So he came and dropped them off, which is awesome. And uh, Tim here is another a neighbour, uh, more or less. <laughs> so he's been putting them up. We've got, I think, two on this side, two on the other side. And we're going to have two over the top of the boat as well. Thanks for your help, Tim. You're welcome. <laughs> So I'm a little bit worried about a big um, shake I found in this piece. It was actually visible before I started planning it, um, but now I can see it looks a bit deeper than I thought. It goes across the grain, which is a bit worrying, but I'm just gonna do a couple of shallow uh, drill holes and see if I can see how deep it is on this side. Well, it's not looking great so far. I've drilled about two inches, and at two inches it's showing no sign of really disappearing, so it's clearly uh, really quite deep. I'm gonna explore my options a bit. Uh, I think for now I'm gonna uh, work on facing the next piece of timber, just while I think about exactly what I'm gonna do with this. The annoying thing is, of course, that it, it goes pretty much right across the width of the wood, and it's right here, almost in the middle of the timber as well, so it's going to make it really quite hard to work around it and get other pieces out. So the guys have been working hard on the framing and the result is that, as you can see, uh, we've got 13 frames here finished, which is the entire centre section of the boat, which is where all the frames bed directly into the keel timber. And now you can clearly see uh, the stern section, where there's another 13 frames uh, that lead up to the back of the boat. Alright, so really we've reached a bit of a milestone uh, in this project, which is great. Uh, we've now bedded and finished all the uh, frames in the centre section of the boat, so that's about one third of the total frames. And that's really good, however, it took us far too long, and at this rate the whole rebuild is, is going to take too long. So you guys have already met Kurt, and he's come up a couple of times, and he's brought some really interesting ideas to the project, and he's kind of come from a different background to me, and a fresh perspective, and some really smart ways of looking at things. So. Um, He's got a pretty exciting idea that hopefully is going to help us um, achieve the next phase of the rebuild much more quickly. So, can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, the center section was 13 frames that all uh, bed into the keel timber. Um, now we have the stern assembly frames, which is um, another 13. So we're looking at doing this barn raising style where we get the number of volunteers in here that we need to be able to production line the frames and be able to uh, crank out a frame a day for two to three weeks uh, until all of the frames are completed and bedded uh, into the stern assembly. Um, it means that we're going to need uh, a couple more volunteers than we already have scheduled. So if you're available in March, um, feel free to reach out uh, if you have you know a month to spare for come and do this and this sounds interesting. And we'll be renting a house and um, we, you won't all have to sleep in the workshop with me. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be staying in a house uh, nearby. The reason that nothing like this has happened before is because it's an incredible amount of organization just figuring out how to manage having five in-progress frames here without mixing up the fuddocks alone is the challenge. Um, let alone like um, training everybody and um, getting them to work together. So essentially, yeah. Kurt's in charge of organizing this um, 
barn raising frame making party. So, um, so new volunteers and odd volunteers, so anyone that gets in touch um, with us through our new volunteer email address, which is uh, below the video, um, you'll be speaking to Kurt, and Kurt will be reaching out to you. And apologies to all the people who have reached out to me and haven't got an answer or have had to wait too long. I just uh, really struggle to, to find the time between everything else to keep on top of my inbox. <laughs> Leo doesn't have any any time to do this at all, which is why this hasn't happened earlier. You haven't hung out with him yet, but he just works 6 a.m. in the morning till midnight every single day, even on weekends, and he's been doing that for like a year and a half. So <clears throat> he doesn't have time to do this. He's also the fastest, the only shipwright in the yard and the fastest carpenter. And before this happens, we need to have the center line complete. Uh, so from now until then, Leo's on a deadline so expect some hustle out of Leo for the next couple of videos. <laughs> but yeah, it's a it's a really exciting idea. Um, we've got a lot of work to do. The it's going to be few weeks should be nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be crazy around here for a few weeks. Yeah. And then Looking we're going to have a big party. Yeah, yeah. Then we're going to have a huge party. If it goes well. If it goes well, <laughs> either way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, thanks for um, being involved. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, after plenty of planing, the uh, top surface of this piece is as close to perfectly flat as I'm going to get it. So I'm now going to draw around the template for my stern post and then cut it out. This morning I looked through all the timber um, really closely to look for any other defects in every piece so I could work out which piece I'm going to use for what and uh, I've concluded that whatever I do with the uh, piece with the, the big shake in it um, this piece can definitely be my stern post so I position this plywood template on the piece now I have to remember not to cut out the little hole that I made in the template so it could fit around the um, post in the workshop but other than that I think this template is good and yeah, might as well get on with it. Now this is a jig for the chainsaw which was uh, built for me by my friend Mark at Wolf Metalworks and um, I used this to cut the shape into my keel timber for Tally Ho and uh, now I'm going to use it again to rough out the shape of the stern post. So the first thing to do is mount the saw in it. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is just try and uh, test this for squareness. <coughs> Seems to be cutting nice and square at least. So I've just done the first two cuts on the stern post and I'm really happy with how they've come out. I've stayed about an eighth of an inch or less away from the line and it's given me a pretty nice cut. Obviously it will need cleaning up with a plane. Now there'll be a couple more cuts to make and then the next job will be to plane all these surfaces but it's probably time for me pretty soon to um, head upstairs into the office and uh, spend a couple of days making this video. So. Um, I might get one or two more cuts in tonight, but I have to do the rest of the work on the stern post and the rest of the stern assembly next week.
Well, I'm really pleased with that. All these cuts have come out really nicely. They're all nice and square. Using some compressed air to uh, keep the line clear makes a big difference. So I've still got to cut the shape out of the bottom a little bit, but I think I'll leave that for now. It's uh, getting dark and the chainsaw needs a sharpen and I've got to make a video. Well, it's pretty dark out here. Uh, not all of the new lights are rigged up yet, but a couple of them are. So uh, let's turn them on for a test. This is like daylight out here. This is going to be amazing for working at night uh, when we have to, especially when the rest of them are up. This is just two lights out of eight. Um, I don't think we'll need all of them, <laughs> at least not in the same place. All right, well that's it for now, so thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise contributed towards the Tally Ho project. It makes a huge difference and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.